Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug and this is my walkthrough for free response question number six of the 2025 AP Chemistry exam. This is a shorter free response question worth a total of four points. That's about 9% of the entire free response section. As I record this video, the questions have just been posted to the College Board's website, so this is not an official key. I'm not an official spokesman for College Board. I'm just an AP Chemistry teacher who's taught this class for a really long time. Remember that even if your method or explanation does not match mine exactly, any answer that is chemically correct should receive full credit. And if you find this video helpful, please hit that like button and share this video with a friend. I really appreciate your support. It's been a lot of work making these videos, but I hope they've been helpful to you this year. Thanks again. Now, here's question number six. Question six is an electrochemistry question. It says a scientist constructs a galvanic cell, as shown in the diagram here. As the cell operates, the zinc electrode increases in mass and the aluminum electrode decreases in mass. A data table with the standard reduction potentials for the substances follows the diagram. Now, there are a couple clues here for part A. Part A says write the half reaction for the oxidation that occurs at the anode. Now, how do we figure out which one is the anode and which one is the cathode? Notice that it says that the aluminum electrode decreases in mass and the zinc electrode increases in mass. Well, whenever we have two metallic electrodes like this, the cathode is the one that increases in mass, right? The cat gets fat, as sometimes we say. So since the mass of the zinc electrode increases, that must be the cathode. Well, the question is asking about the anode. Well, if zinc is the cathode, aluminum has to be the anode. Now it says write the half reaction for the oxidation. Now if we look at how the aluminum half reaction is written, this is the reduction, isn't it? So we have to flip it around to write it as an oxidation. So we're going to flip it and write it like this. Al yields Al3 plus plus three electrons. So give yourself a point if you gave that as your answer for part A. Now, part B says, write the balance net ionic equation for the overall reaction that occurs in the galvanic cell. Now, we have that aluminum half reaction that we just wrote, but we also want to write down the zinc. Now, since the zinc is being reduced, we write it as it stands. Zn2 plus, plus two electrons yields zinc. Now, we have to add these two half reactions together, but one thing we have to remember is that the electrons have to cancel out whenever we add these together. So we can't do that if it's three and two. So what we have to do here is multiply equation number one by two and multiply half reaction number two by three, like this. So now we have six electrons on both sides that will cancel out completely. So when you add these two half reactions together, we get the overall balanced equation for the galvanic cell. Two aluminums, solid, plus three zinc two plus ions, aqueous, yields two Al three plus ions, aqueous, plus three Zn atoms, solid. Of course, the state symbols are optional for that. Give yourself a point if you answered part B correctly. Now, part C says initially, each electrode has a mass of 50.0 grams. The cell is allowed to run for a period of time and is then stopped. Which electrode's mass changed the most? Justify your answer with a calculation. Well, this is basically a, a stoichiometry problem. If we take a look at that balanced equation that we just wrote for this galvanic cell, we can see that for every two moles of aluminum that we use up, we're going to produce three moles of zinc. Now, we don't have uh, two moles of aluminum or three moles of zinc to work with. We only have 50 grams. So let's talk about this in terms of 0.2 and 0.3 moles. For every 0.2 moles of aluminum consumed, and that's 0.2 times the molar mass of aluminum, which is about 5.4 grams, 0.3 moles of zinc are produced. So 0.3 times 65.4 grams per mole is 19.6 grams. And so as we look at the little calculation there, we can say that the mass of the zinc cathode is going to change a whole lot more than the mass of the aluminum anode. And there are basically two reasons for that. It's the mole ratio, the fact that it's three moles of zinc for every two moles of aluminum, and the fact that an atom of zinc just has more mass 
than a mass of aluminum as well. So give yourself a point if you answered that correctly and gave a reasonable explanation for that as well. Now, part D, we have a series of reduction half reactions and it says the standard zinc aluminum cell has a value of E cell equal to 0.90 volts. The scientist needs a galvanic cell that produces a greater voltage. The scientist has access to the chemical systems in the table. If the scientist uses the zinc half cell and one of the other options from the table, what is the maximum voltage that could be generated at standard conditions? Now the way I tell students to solve problems like this is think about all these numbers on a number line. Okay, so perhaps you've seen a number line in math class and imagine all these negative and positive numbers are, are plotted on that number line. Zinc has to be one of these. Which of those other numbers is farthest away from negative 0.76 on the number line? Now you can do some calculations, but I think most of you can see that the one that's farthest away on the number line from negative 0.76 is the gold value, plus 1.50 volts. And so that's the combination you want to use, zinc and gold. Now let's calculate the actual voltage here. So we know that uh, E cell is going to be E of the cathode minus E of the anode. The one that's most uh, positive is going to go in the slot for the cathode, so that's the gold value, 1.50. The one that's most negative goes in the value of the anode, that's negative 0.76. So when you calculate this, you find that 1.50 minus negative 0.76 volts gives you an overall voltage of 2.26 volts. And so hopefully you got that correct combination and the correct voltage as well. So if you did, give yourself yet another point on question number six. So how did you do? Leave a comment down below. I'll try to respond to as many of you as I can, although around AP exam time things get really busy for me, so don't feel too bad if I don't reply to your comment personally. Don't forget to watch my walkthrough videos for all the other AP Chem 2025 free response questions. The official answer keys will be posted to AP Central sometime in late summer 2025. Thanks again for watching. I wish you all the best in your academic pursuits, and I hope to see you again soon.